Good morning and welcome to Groom Lake Air Force Base, also known as Redacted. Today we will be flying a mission under the Constant Peg program and take the MiG-19 out for a spin and see what they can do. As you can see, our Constant Peg aircraft are parked all around us. We got uh, some Yaks, some MiG-15s, a lone MiG-21, and then again some training Skyhawks and Tigers, or rather Freedom Fighters for this day and age. So, the MiG-19, I got it off the sale, I was very happy to see it there. Uh, it's a module that had a bit of, not really trouble history, but... Um, it's not really a module that's been gaining a lot of attention, and that is obviously because the module is a little bit off. A little bit of an odd choice, really. Most of the aircraft focused in this time frame have not been late 1950s strike fighters. However, I'm a fan of strike fighters, both the game and the airplane type, so... Obviously, what we should be doing here is uh, we should take this MiG for a spin and uh, realize how well the East German camouflage fits into the Nevada desert. So, basically, a East German pilot flew this over the wall and decided that, hey, money is nice, capitalism is good. So, he brought his MiG-19 with us. And uh, now it will be our turn to take it out for a spin. Now, there are currently some sabers, and uh, yeah, I can't actually say the name MiG 15s. Um, currently on an exercise, so we will be starting our taxi procedure. Wheel brakes are away. Now, when it comes to taxing, the MiG-19 handles very much like the um, MiG-21, which is not really strange. Both aircraft are not that far apart, uh, but it also means that taxiing can be a bit of a chore if you're unused to the system. Uh, how the taxiing works is, of course, that you pull the direction you want, and then you hold the brakes. Now, if you do this properly, uh, this is a accurate and simple system and not use, but um, it takes a while getting used to it. I'm not going to uh, deny that, that I prefer the regular system of just of uh, simply using either a nose wheel steering or just using the rudders, but this system is basically tricky as hell. One thing that is good about it is that uh, you end up binding your HOTAS in a way that makes it very easy indeed to, um, to break. It's not, it's not a system that encourages mistakes in any sort of yeah, I don't think we're supposed to see what's in that particular... Yeah, it looks like li some other kind of liberated aircraft that we should obviously not have any look to. Now, our MiG-19 for today is armed with rocket pods, sidewinders, and fuels. So, uh, oh look, they actually dug out the relics today as well. So, our mission today is to employ weapons on the MiG-19, as well as try the basic moves. As you can see, uh, this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, you, once you uh, pull the brake, the aircraft will start to turn and accept the rudder. Looks like we have uh, some sort of fire over there. I hope that's not our air-to-air -air target that's just gone down in flames, because the then we don't have anyone to actually test the missiles on. Should 
she breaks very easily. So it's like I said, it's not not really a problem. It's just a, a system that you have to get used to. Also, of course, the fact that the nose wheel will, of course, keep on turning even after you release the brake. So a little bit tricky, but uh, the reason I picked this little longer taxi period is uh, simply because I wanted to get used to it. Now the MiG-19 is of course created by Raspam and on its release it was a uh, bit of a not maybe not really the best bird available but uh, they, Raspam has made a commitment to patching up their products before starting on any new projects. And I actually believe them on that. And so far they have done a fantastic job in upgrading the Mirage 2000. I don't really know why my track IR insists on showing this as the center point, but uh, this is what happens if you try to use the rudder to steer without applying the brakes. What happens is that the movement will be m minimal at best. So we're going to pull the brakes and we are going to see if there's any inbound landings. So far it doesn't look like it. Either that or they've already landed and I missed it. But no, the Sabre parking spots are all empty, so... In field, 1-1. One, one. Request taxi to runway. In field, 1-1. One, one. We are clear to taxi to runway 32. And of course the standard fun and games regarding the yeah. Yeah. So basically I solved that little problem with the centralization problem by just adjusting the sensor. It's not the best way to solve it, but uh, I, f I would suspect my sensor might have something to do with why the centralization is off. One funny thing is that you see these missiles here, the AA2 Atolls. There is a story going around that uh, uh, yeah, the Sabres have just landed. I can see them behind us. At least two of them. Um, there's a story going around that uh, in the uh, air combat between the People's Republic of China and the uh, Republic of China, that is Taiwan, uh, the uh, Taiwanese had been equipped with Sidewinders from the US. And uh, they were fighting MiG-17s and MiG-19s. And uh, the Soviets basically got a missile by a missile ending up in a pilot's tailpipe. And it didn't detonate or anything. So the Russians copied it down to the level that makes the... Basically, the Atoll can be fitted on any Sidewinder compatible aircraft without modification. That's the level of copying that was done. And that was actually transferred to later models of the um, Atoll. Uh, however, then uh, since then, uh, the uh, production of Russian missiles have diverged, and uh, it's apparently no longer that valid. So we are heading to the runway, second runway that is.
Or we we can actually take this one. Just see how. F yeah, because there's a those aircraft are heading for overhead. And I don't really care about the ATC. We'll just request the takeoff. One, one. Request takeoff. Need to line her up. And full throttle. There is a button here that I would very much like to find, but I, that I can't right now. Basically, the for the afterburner to employ properly, you need to have the entire... You need to... Uh, Press a button that will unlock it, but it doesn't really matter. Raising your landing gear is a far simpler task than in, say, the MiG-21, since you don't need to have you don't need to worry about the landing gear lock or anything. You just push the damn button like it's supposed to. And as you notice, we actually took off without any flaps. The MiG-19 is essentially just a rocket with wings. And this also means that it's a rocket that is very... Fuel... It, it requires a lot of fuel, simple as that. Uh, sorry, I don't run off a script with this one. This is just my genuine first impressions and what knowledge I have retained from the manual and Wikipedia. I mean, it's, it looks kind of strange with this East German autumn-inspired camouflage over Nevada. And it fits. Not only fits, but fits well. Either way, in flight, the MiG-19, like any other aircraft from this day and age, needs to be trimmed. If I just let go of the stick, the aircraft will do a decent job of flying itself, but you do want to have at least some measure of uh, trim applied to the aircraft. So we are currently on max military thrust, and letting go of the joystick now, the aircraft will point down a little bit, so we will be trimming it upwards a little bit. Of course, this is all, all, always a measure of doing tiny, tiny movements. So, the first thing we are going to do now is we're going to switch to the rocket pods. We are going to one rocket, the day site. And, of course, we are going to check the... Sight is on. Rocket pods are on. Radar on. Left and right guns have power. And of course the uh, gun camera has power. And as you can see we have a cage and uncage lever here. So pull the lever wrong. Still don't actually have the sight on, so I'll just we'll visit the other switch brakes and yeah, that's the emergency pilot heater. Yeah, the sight is online now, so we are good to go. But the first thing we are going to do is find some ground targets and pound them into the dust. The MiG-19 does not support firing more than one weapon at once. As you can see here, 
the guns, the guided missiles and everything like that has its own own little thing. So um, you can't uh, just use guns and rockets at the same time. It's a little bit of a disappointment, but hey, if that's the way they want to do it, that's the way they want to do it. It's not, like I said, it's not really a modern plane by any stretch of the imagination. So, we're going to have a look on where the target range might actually be. Uh, oh, it's right over here, this triangle here, just across the, on top of the actual salt lake. We should have at least some convoys or other targets. I think I can see them. Nah, that's, that's a bunch of buildings. So that's not it. But there they are. So we're gonna move in and we're gonna use the trigger and the rockets and see if we have done this correctly. Yep. Rockets away. Now I wouldn't say that is the best way of applying rockets to a target. But it's not the worst way either for that matter. I mean we engage the target uncontested. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, it, it was pretty good. Now we'll see if we have any rockets left. If we do, we're going to spend them. If we do not, we are going to employ guns on the target instead. We have a couple of targets grouped together and to the right. That will be our... No, we are out of rockets. I say again, we are out of rockets. Pull up. Switch to guns. Just like the MiG-21, you need to uh, reload the guns by basically firing a thing, a charge, into the cannons, which will arm them. Now, I have no idea if I'm supposed to get a sound cue. In the MiG-21, you always get a sound cue when you do that. And if they haven't replicated that in the uh, MiG-19, then I actually need to yell at Raspam a bit for that, because they really have oaked to uh, replicate that. If it's present in the MiG-21, they should have replicated it in the MiG-19, especially since it's the same deal of a system. The 30mm cannons on the MiG-19 are absolutely terrifying, so we are gonna... Yeah, here we go. They sound very satisfying when firing as well. I mean, that is one very satisfying sound. In fact, the targets we have chosen might actually be a bit too soft for the 30mm rounds, since they might actually just pass right through them, but I don't really care. I mean, it's a very satisfying sound here from the guns. I mean, it's loud thumping. I mean, it's uh, hearing that when you fire on an aircraft is probably really, really nice. On target. Hit. I have to say the MiG-19 so far seems to me like it's going to be a very competent dogfighter. It's not a difficult plane to fly at all. It doesn't feel like the MiG-21, where 
the MiG-21 is actively trying to kill you. Um, in fact, I'm more pleased with the MiG-19 than I am with the MiG-21. Uh, I don't know if this is poor simulation or if the MiG-19 really behaved this way. But I do happen to know that the MiG-19 was not always popular with its pilots. MiG-19 is a good example of a plane that is, per that is uh, in most flight games that has it, is actually a nice aircraft to fly and competent at what it's doing. But in real life it's just a horrible mess. Guns, guns, guns. Looks like the saber is all gone to ground as well. We also have uh, the uh, MiG-15s taxing on the runway, so runway will be clear once we are done with our trials here. However, that also means that the fire we saw earlier was most likely the air-to-air -air test drone that I had planned to test my missiles on, so testing the missiles will simply have to be done at some other time. Coming in hot. Guns, guns, guns. <clears throat> and that's it for the guns. We're switching to guided missiles. And we can already hear the tone. So what we are going to do is uh, we are essentially going to blind fire these missiles so we don't actually land with them. I know they were tricky for the US to uh, get, but... Um, we can basically test them against a an omnipresent power source. I'm just going to see where that... Oh, that power source is currently in a bit of an angle, but... Um Apparently there's something I'm doing wrong, because the guided missile does not wish to fire. Well, if that's going to be the case, we might as well take the bird in for a landing. The MiG-19 also has some really amazing air brakes attached to it. Meaning that you will not have that much problem slowing this aircraft down if you are like me and your landings tend to be a bit hot. Oh, now you want to fire them? Seriously? I can only assume that uh, the reason... the miss <laughs> This is actually just ridiculous. But we basically fired two very valuable Soviet captured eight, uh, captured uh, missiles into just the desert, not even testing their guidance systems or anything like that. Just ridiculous. Now, we are going to set our flaps for landing. This is something I actually neglected to do earlier. And uh, we are going to stop our air brakes. And we're gonna come in at uh, the Groom Lake runway. All in all, I'm actually pretty satisfied with the MiG-19. It's not a complicated aircraft. It's uh, y you probably need some time to get good in it. But uh, in terms of just taking it up and flying, it's not a bad experience at all. I mean, it's uh, definitely one of those aircraft that, alongside the um, Saber, MiG-15, and F-5 are going to be one of those planes you might as well just boot up for the sheer joy of flying. So let's see if we can do a proper landing here. I'm gonna... There we go. My landings are seldom good. 
I'm going to just say that for the record. Because it's true. My landings are seldom good. However, the first time I tried to land the MiG-19, I actually did a pretty fair job with it. So I'm kind of hoping I will do a fair job with it this time. Especially since I have, like, the entire runway of a test range to uh, land the thing in. So we're going to come in more at an angle here. Increase speed and increase angle of attack on the final. Now, of course, I do have the air brakes should I need them, but I don't really see me having that much of a need for said air brakes just yet. I have to admit, I kind of miss the Viggins uh, computer telling me roughly where my plane is going to touch down, because that is a very useful thing to have. In fact, I think that I'm aiming a bit... Yeah, the draw distance on my computer is playing tricks on me. The runway is actually closer than the things want them to appear to be. Power, power, power. Settle her on the runway. Flare it. Air brakes. Regular brakes. I would say that went well. A little bit of a fast landing there, but uh, not gonna argue with it. So we are now down on the runway. We will be taxiing over to the other constant peg competitors at this point in time. Back to the Sabres and the Mix. The landing actually went well. Holding the air brakes so we don't get it too much dirt into them. In summary, I paid about 18 bucks for the MiG-19, and uh, I, I'd say I got my money's worth. The campaign in, included is also made by Baltic Dragon, and I trust that guy with my single play content. I absolutely do. So, this is going to be a bird that I'm looking forward to learning more, because it's going to be the kind of plane where your piloting skills is gonna matter more than how well you know the different systems involved. But I say I, I would actually say that Raspam has so far made very friendly player friendly modules and the MiG-19 is not a is not at all an exception from that. Uh, I would say that the MiG-19 is an absolute joy to fly. But if you're going for a MiG and you want the simpler MiG between the MiG-21 and the MiG-19, the MiG-19 is definitely going to be the easier plane to fly. Because I, just the fact that I haven't actually landed the MiG-21 yet says a lot about it. So we are going to get our In some ways I would actually say the plane reminds me more of the F eighty six Sabre than it does the MiG nineteen. Or sorry, the MiG twenty one. 
Because parts of it are just so f simple. So easy. And the armament options are also very similar. I mean, two very bad missiles and... Uh, bombs and rockets. So... Yeah, I think the MiG-19 and I are going to be friends. So let's park with the other MiGs here, without trying to crash into them, I might add. Rolling, 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 and stop. Cockpit is now open, and the test flight is concluded. Thank you for staying with me, and have a good day.